it wiped out all of our confirmed work for virtually the rest of the year and took us having a tight but comfortable cash flow situation through till February uh, to having roughly about five weeks left to live. Hey everybody, welcome to another AV Asia Pacific lockdown podcast and uh, today I have Peter Mill joining us. Hello Peter. Good, good afternoon, how are you Chris? Yeah, very well. Peter's um, technical director over at the Electric Canvas for those who don't know him. Um, Peter, thanks for joining us and um, I guess first question is uh, how is the Electric Canvas surviving uh, the apocalypse? Well, when the uh, news came through about uh, the restriction on public gatherings, I think it was about four or five weeks ago, uh, it was a bit of a shock, of course, although it wasn't completely unexpected. Uh, it wiped out all of our confirmed work for virtually the rest of the year and took us from having a tight but comfortable cash flow situation through till February uh, to having roughly about five weeks left to live. Uh, so obviously we had to do something pretty quick and uh, and dramatic because, uh, you know, I've, I've run the company now for 23 years, so I wasn't going to go down without a fight. And, sure. and there were 14 families that sort of depended from, on their livelihood and survival on the electric canvas. And mm. uh, and uh, together, together with them, uh, we devised a number of plans, including cutbacks. Unfortunately, we had to say goodbye to a few people, uh, although the job keeper might, uh, might wind the clock back on them and bring them back. Mm. Uh, the rest of uh, the... The, the great team we've got had, had agreed to to work flexible days, uh, say three days a week, and if uh, if need be, we can make access to their entitlements uh, uh, to prop prop up the the deficit uh, because they've all got mortgages or many of them have got mortgages, all got rents to pay and families to feed. Uh, it was of utmost important to uh, myself and my other directors that. Uh, we didn't put any unnecessary jeopardy on anyone's entitlements. Many people have been with us for a long time, in excess of 10 years, and uh, one particular uh, one particular person's been with us for over 20. So it was really important that we, we had a strategy that we could accurately track our survival envelope and, uh, and whilst not putting people's entitlements uh, at risk. So I'm happy to say that we've managed to stretch out our that uh, said survival envelope uh, at least until the end of October. So we're in stage three of our survival plan now, which is um, uh, talking to clients and customers about uh, what can be done without uh, uh, transgressing the government guidelines for public gatherings because, you know, uh, the electric canvas is about public gatherings. That's what we do. As many special event orientated uh, providers uh, uh, but there are things that we can do. We're, we're lucky in that we uh, we have a multi-stringed um, uh, operation in that we have an art department that can be working on projects that don't get delivered straight away. Uh, uh, for the technicians, it's a little bit different because uh, there's no or uh, very little work for them to do if we're not prepping for a, for a job that's going out the door in the near future. But for the art department, we're... we're uh, we're, we're trying to work on projects we know uh, will be outside the coronavirus f uh, footprint and its restrictions. Um, and uh, hopefully that will keep uh, uh, the guys going um, for at least um, three days a week for the next few months. Mm. What uh, were some of the big ticket projects that have gone on hold? Oh, look, there's a number of um, annual projects we do, like uh, uh, you were just telling me that you're in Ballarat. Uh, we do the Winter Wonder Lights at, uh, at Sovereign Hill, and we've done that for a number of years. That's, that's a big one, one of the fatalities uh, of this crisis. Uh, we had a big project uh, in winter also in, in Perth, and, uh, of course, uh, we were doing Vivid Chatswood and... Uh, working on a number of other vivid precincts in Sydney. Uh, all of that went away, of course, um, um, uh, along with the prospects of some of our Christmas work, but we're hoping that that will be saved by the bell, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, uh, a number of, uh, of major projects uh, that we'd already started on uh, were unfortunately cancelled. And uh, I think that uh, initially when those announcements were made, the rhetoric was that we'll be back bigger and better next year. But as time has gone by in those uh, those few short weeks that feel like an eternity, I think 
people have realised that it's it's really important to keep uh, the knowledge and the experience of, of teams like the Electric Canvas intact uh, to in order to be able to come back uh, uh, bigger and better next year uh, without uh, severe impediments, including you know the limited budgets that we seem to have in this business these days. So, I think I think customers now are, are starting to realise that it's in their interest to uh, to help their uh, their contractors, of which they have a long history with, to um, uh, to survive this uh, in order to 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 retain the knowledge. It's um, it's not so difficult to buy skills, but it's very difficult to buy knowledge and experience. Mm. Fear tech guys. Um what uh, can be done? I guess there's only so much maintenance in the warehouse that can be done. Well, look, there's a lot of things to be done. Um, uh, we have a morning meeting with everyone on Skype because uh, those that can work from home or working from home, art department, admin, people, marketing. Uh, but we have a morning meeting. We keep it brief. We keep it light. And we discuss ideas. And uh, uh, there's been many, many things over the years uh, that, that have been on our wish list to do to do with systems and organisation and uh, how we run our business that have always been been pushed to the back burner because we've been so busy doing jobs. So there is a wealth of, uh, of stuff that we can do. And that's the, my message for everybody is do that stuff and come out of this stronger than uh, you were when you went in. So uh, that's our plan. What's your take on how the market bounces back? I think it'll be challenging. I, I think that uh, uh, depending on, you know, who your clients are and, uh, and, uh, where their funding comes from. For us, uh, I suppose about 80% of our clients uh, derive their income from government, whether it be uh, local, state or federal. And um, and uh, those entities are going to find that money is going to be a bit scarce having spent the billions that the government has rightfully spent to uh, to try to save the economy and, and those who depend on it. So I think there's going to be some challenges. Uh, I think there's going to, and those are going to last for some time uh, in the future. Um, I don't think uh, that we'll fully recover for probably three to four years, if, if not more, and it will certainly be in a different form. It, uh, uh, it'll be a different landscape, I'm sure. But as long as everybody stays positive and works together and supports each other, um, uh, I think that uh, uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We just have to make sure it's neither a candle or a freight train. <laughs> well said. Is, uh, and finally, what's your instinct regarding people's behaviour and how that will return? Well, as far as our industry, our industry uh, is blessed with with the majority of of professionals um, and people that that are very supportive of each other. And I think that that our industry, as far as the practitioners within it, will survive quite well. Uh, I mean, I've spoken to so many of our uh, uh, subcontractors, freelance technicians, artists, etc. And uh, especially the technicians that have got very little prospects unless they're into uh, online conferencing, etc. Um, and they're being very stoic about it. They understand everyone's in the same boat. They understand that, uh, you know, that it's time to do some training and we're offering training to, to our regulars as well during this period. Um, uh, once we get over the immediate hurdles, so uh, that's what we'll be doing. We've already done some, uh, uh, with the view of of trying to keep people engaged, keep people interested, keep people uh, uh, hopeful and uh, of the future, and uh, to come out of this um, uh, with a spring in our step. Mm. It's good. Um, it's good to see you in uh, such uh, resolute spirits, Peter. Thanks for taking the time to talk to. Talk to us on um, on Aviation Pacific magazine. Spirits were at always <laughs> resolute, all good. Um, I'll say over the last few weeks, but um, uh, we're turning negatives into positives, and every day we talk about it, we're turning more negatives into more positives, and uh, we can't ask for much more than that in this uh, in this situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. Thanks again. Take care. Okay. Thank you, Chris.